This uh, chat session organized by STEM Alliance and Scientix. Uh, we are really happy to have uh, classes from around Europe that are connected today to discuss about uh, STEM careers with two experts. Uh, so the chat session, as I said, is jointly organized by two educational initiatives. Uh, so Scientix, the science education community in Europe, and STEM Alliance, uh, which brings together industry and uh, education together to promote STEM careers. So we have today more than 200 uh, students that are here to uh, chat with us and discuss about uh, STEM careers in the petrochemical industry. And uh, we are really pleased to have two experts today with us to uh, answer your question. So I'm going... So we have Ana Isabel Montenegro Garcia from Repsol. She's a Spanish scientist in chemistry, working uh, in the petro petrochemical industry for quite many years, but she will tell you more uh, afterwards. And we have Angret Itoriaga Abarzoa from INEOS uh, in Germany. Uh, and she works as head of communication uh, in this company. So I'm going to talk a bit about the activity and then I will let you uh, introduce yourself. So just before explaining uh, the activity, I remind you that you can uh, use the social media channels of both initiatives, so STEM Alliance and Scientix. If you want to tweet or post some uh, messages on Facebook, to share your experience uh, interacting with uh, some experts from uh, the STEM industry. You are very uh, encouraged and welcome to do it. And now I I'm, want to explain a bit the context why we are organizing such type of activity. Um, so at the moment in Europe, uh, we are facing a shortage of STEM professionals. So we are, there, there are not enough young people choosing uh, STEM studies and then going to uh, jobs in this area. So the objective of the STEM Alliance is to promote these careers, but also to uh, raise awareness on the diversity and the many opportunities that exist uh, in the industry uh, if you decide to go for STEM studies and STEM jobs. So, but for this, um, we need uh, to encourage uh, both teachers and students to uh, get information and uh, take part to activity to understand what are all these opportunities. And um, the STEM Alliance and Scientix is working both with industry and with ministries of education in 34 countries uh, to address this uh, skill gap. So, <clears throat> Uh, this uh, chat session uh, is part of uh, the STEM careers and skills of the future scheme. So basically each time uh, we present a different type of uh, job existing in the STEM industry. Uh, and we have some webinars and some chat sessions. So today we are really happy, as I said, to have class directly connected. And, that will, uh, and the students prepare their question with the teacher. Uh, and they will ask you many questions about your job, so I hope you are ready. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> um, and just uh, before we start, I just want to say that uh, uh, it's time now uh, of the back to school campaign and uh, at the end of uh, September we will uh, communicate a lot about uh, the opportunity existing for teachers uh, in the STEM Alliance. And uh, we will also launch a new competition where teachers will be able to share uh, how they are introducing the STEM careers uh, topic in their teaching. And they will be able yeah, to share about their, the event they organize, the resources they develop. So uh, all of you are connected to this. Stay, stay tuned on our communication channel. You will know more about this opportunity really soon. But now I want to uh, move on to um, our activity of today. So why are we connecting today? Uh, the chat address is the classes, so the pupils from secondary schools. 
uh, that are led by one or more teacher, and we are promoting the awareness of all aspects of STEM Gary, but today we're focusing on the petrochemical industry. Uh, and since this chat brings together key STEM professionals and classes from different European countries, uh, we hope that it will help you enhance your lesson. And be aware also that uh, as a follow-up of this activity, we will uh, publish some uh, an article explaining what we discussed today, the recording of the session, and some additional resources so teacher can uh, integrate the career aspect in their teaching. So now I'm going to move on to uh, our speakers, and I will uh, before we so we have uh, today. You cannot see my colleague on your screen, but we have. Uh, Anastasia Bolko is us. She's collecting the question from the classes and she will make sure that the expert can answer them. Uh, but before we start with the question, I'm going to ask you to briefly introduce yourself. So let's start with Anglet, if you want. Yes, sure. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Anglet Ituriala. I'm the head of communications in uh, at Ineos in Germany and based in Cologne. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. And so Anna? Anna Montenegro, I'm from Spain, as you told before, and I'm the head of in improvement and innovation for the chemicals in Repsol. Thank you very much. So now uh, we are going to move on. So that you will know more about them uh, throughout the chat session uh, because we're sure that there are some questions that will be about your career path, etc. So. Um, Anastasia, we can start with the, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, well, that's a normal question, no? So I'm going to tell the question so everybody knows what we are talking about. So the first question is what does a typical working day look like uh, for both our, our expert? And I suggest you can start. Anna. Well, uh, in my actual position, the, the, my responsibility is to help all the people who work for chemistry uh, to do different uh, ways uh, to do the, the normal things. I mean, uh, you know how innovation and all these kind of new ways to co-create and innovate can help everybody. But the culture in STEM uh, was uh, during your my life when I was studying the classical one. Nowadays everything is changing. Mm -hmm. Nowadays we have to change the way we think, the way we ourselves create is more uh, is, is more helpful and more uh, you know at, at the end the exit so is to have more colleagues thinking together mm -hmm. and have new ideas and to solve problems together. You know, the collaboration of this is really, well, that's our job today. Mm -hmm. But I was during, in my normal days, to go to the, to the office and help my colleagues. It's more internal. But during my career, in, in my 20 years uh, uh, career in Repsol, I was in chemical uh, is, is I was I am in chemical, but I was starting in the technical part, mm -hmm. developing products to help customers. And you can be every day uh, speaking with uh, a lot of customers around the world to look for their needs, to try to solve with the, an improvement in your products or developing new products. Uh, in another step of my career, I was in the commercial, and you have to travel a lot. And you have to to be visiting these customers to look face to face or even in the in the in the plants uh, looking at their needs directly and well uh, depends on the job I was uh, arranging but I, I have to change my day my normal day but it's more or less like this okay so let's say that there are different type of typical <laughs> yeah. uh, depending on the different position exactly okay and for you, Andre, how could you define a typical uh, day at work for okay. you? <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes I would love to have a typical day. That's the point. I mean, my uh, okay. If you ask me what my ideal day would be, so I would okay. get up, yeah, I would have planned what I do before, 
and I would go to uh, the, the premises of the Pluto plant, um, mm -hmm. which is about uh, 10 minutes driving or 15 minutes driving from where I live. Mm -hmm. And then I would, you know, work, check my emails and um, get, get in touch with, with, with other people, mm -hmm. uh, have some phone calls, have some meetings, and this would be ideal. Okay. But it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> so explain us how it is. <laughs> it's not that. Yes, I'm responsible for internal and external communications mm -hmm. and uh, also for uh, whenever there is an issue in the company, so when the plants are not working uh, like we think or we would expect them to work. So um, that means that you have to be prepared that that can happen in every second because uh, the plants are running 24 hours 7, mm -hmm. that means all, all, around, uh, all around the clock. And uh, so if there's an issue, if something yeah, it's not working properly, uh, then we have immediate to inform our neighbors, for example, or the media. Okay. Because we are very close uh, to the media in, in Cologne, Cologne University as well, and Cologne City as well, so okay. we have to, you yeah. know, yeah. uh, be prepared that we have to um, meet uh, journalists or TV station or uh, whom else in, 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 in the opinion. Okay. So yeah, it's... Uh, it doesn't happen that you get bored and can't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that's <laughs> Okay. That's uh, I, I, I saw that we had some questions mm -hmm. coming in, um, and we are going to enter them uh, quite soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm going to do it. Yes. So the next question we have coming in from our, some student from Serbia uh, is addressed to Anna, and basically it's asking how long will will we be able to use petrochemical resources? So a very hot topic <laughs> for you. Well, you know, it, 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 during our history, it was said that uh, it's going to finish. No, but at the end, the, the this kind of innovation that the chemicals has the possibility uh, working together as industry, we can, uh, we add, uh, well, as you know, I don't know if you know it, but in the petrochemical resources, you can use the, uh, all the, the petrol like this, or you can don't use petrol to do the same products. Nowadays, we are, we are using gas or we are using another kind of petrol, but not really petrol, and we are assuming a big bubble that we can even go down and I think for the rest of my life, sure. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not going to see the finish of the petrochemical resources. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay, but uh, this comes so, but companies are investing a lot in uh, exploring alternative energy. To flexibility, yeah. you know, to be flexible using different resources, not only the, the, the normal ones, the, the, the one who we know, okay? Okay. So it was mainly addressed to Anna, this question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For the next one. <laughs> Sorry. It's not. Okay, uh, so this is a question really interesting also uh, for the STEM Alliance since really our aim is to uh, bring education and industry closer together. So we have a question here, teacher and industry have difficulties to come closer. So what are their strategy plans? So uh, I guess if you have different strategy in different countries, maybe mm -hmm. uh, we can start with what you are doing in uh, yeah. Germany. To yeah. Yeah, I can start. To communicate with mm -hmm. schools and yeah, mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of um, lot of ways to uh, to come closer, uh, like the question is is, is asked. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first uh, the first um, idea or the first um, thing to do is is to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> to get yes. close, yeah. Um, I think. Um, I think there are a lot of possibilities to come closer. Um, uh, for example, in Germany, we have um, 
a lot of initi initiatives uh, for, for schools to visit mm -hmm. our, our plants. Um, since, um, I don't know, almost 17 years, we have the Girls' uh, Day. So girls are invited to, um, to be in, in our plants mm -hmm. uh, for, for a whole day and get to know the different uh, jobs uh, that are possible. And then the teachers come and they come and I do the girls. So, uh, so there, this is the possibility to, to uh, come closer. And um, we have the professionals go back to school initiative, for example. Mm -hmm. So uh, then uh, when we are invited by, by schools, uh, we are happy to, to come there and, and, and show, show um, what we are doing. Um, then uh, there are other possibilities to, uh, to get to know each other. It's not only coming to the schools, but also the schools can meet, come into the premises. Sure. We have open door events, for example, or there's the possibility in Cologne, at in York, that we have a, a chem camp mm -hmm. in Cologne. So it's one week um, in uh, Easter holidays. Okay. <laughs> and um, can people can, and, and uh, students can come to our premises and um, so you have a lot of uh, and, uh, and yeah, and exactly, and yeah. do some labor laboratory work. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I can ask you the same question, can I? Well, more or less, the, my answer is really similar to Andre because uh, I think the best thing a teacher can do is to ask. They want to be nearby, okay? And mm -hmm. I think European School Net is a really good point because they, 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 you have a really good net of professionals mm -hmm. that can that can personally help you. Mm -hmm. But as companies, uh, knocking the door because at the end we are all. I'm going to repeat the Andrek. We have possibilities to visit our plants, to visit our labs. Mm -hmm. We have the possibilities, uh, even in Spain, we are developing a, a, a unit to explain the, the students mm -hmm. in the school the, the energy, mm -hmm. how the energy is important, how is the, the, the point to reach the best energy mm -hmm. and to, to better understand the, the energy way. Mm -hmm. And at the end, any father, any employee has the possibility to mm -hmm. ask uh, I want to tell my kids, the school, my mm -hmm. teachers, the school, mm -hmm. my, you know, my, and you present yourself as uh, employee of a really a big company uh, for this, and this to us. Yeah. Because I think all, not only your solar engineers, I think all of us yes. has this kind of uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, activities. Yeah, I wanted to yeah to add uh, this uh, to what you were saying that uh, so maybe we have some teacher classes that are in. Mm -hmm. More remote area mm -hmm. that are not mm -hmm. directly close to a big industry, or but uh, we've seen a lot of activity. For example, if it's even I don't know the mother of one of the pupil that is pharmacist, and we mm -hmm. explain what yes. is her job. Uh, yes. So this kind of activity, I think, yes. it already brings uh, awareness to the students on what are the career existing uh, into them. And uh, we have quite a lot of online opportunities mm -hmm. also if uh, there is not always the possibility to go directly with the mm -hmm. plant in the plants of uh, the yeah. I mean, what I would like to do more in, in future is, as you say, uh, these kind of online activities mm -hmm. as well, yeah, for people. Sometimes it's a question of money, you know, because mm -hmm. if you don't have the money to to rent the bus mm -hmm. to come to the plant, exactly. yeah, then, you know, that, that's a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. But why not online? Yeah. Chat session, a uh, chat yeah. session, for mm -hmm. example, yeah. and it must not be complicated. Sometimes uh, we even have our managing director just showing his calendar and yeah. sharing the calendar, mm -hmm. and then you have the opportunity to short, uh, yeah. short mm -hmm. chat about yeah. uh, you know what does a managing director do, for example. Good. So I think that there are many other questions coming in. So let's move on to uh, the next one. Yeah. So again, I'm going to ask you. Uh, to both our expert this question. So what are the possible places of employment? How easy is it to find a job in this sector, especially for girls? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's good we have two women here that can yes. speak about their experience. Um, well, I, yeah, think, you can start, I think, you, you know, the first question, what are the possible places of employment for a chemical, for a, for a scientist, for a chemical, for math? Well, it depends, okay, because I think it's the world 
a world of possibilities, no? And even in logistics or even in in in, in the in managing positions, yes. but even in economy, even for uh, all kind of possibilities. In the STEM, for example, I would like to note that maths is going to be the future yes. because we are in the digitalization world, mm -hmm. and the most important career <laughs> is maths. <laughs> Never. We all. When I was a child, I was. I love maths, mm -hmm. but has no future. My mother told me. Oh, you know. Really? <laughs> think, no, that's why I'm finishing. <laughs> but everything changed really, really quick. And at the end, we are here looking for big data yes. analyst because it's incredible. The future is coming. Okay, mm -hmm. and all the STEM possibilities you can imagine uh, goes to this to this way. Okay, and how easy it is to find a job uh, in this sector. If you are thinking in a plant, even in a plant, we had a lot of uh, women mm -hmm. working today, and now the possibilities are, are the same as the other. Okay, uh, it depends on the situation, on the moment, and or on your skins, your own skins. Okay, at the end, you have to be uh, fighting with the rest of the people who was uh, who won the, the job. No, but I think it's it's almost the same. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. even we even have uh, uh, we're searching for cooks, for example, for our canteen. Okay. So that's a broad range. Uh, <laughs> oh, there are so many different. Yeah, yeah. We have we a lot of our doctors. Too. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Medical doctors. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have quite a, a, a range. But what I think is really crucial is that girls um, are addressed very early on. Not. Uh, I mean, you are now listening at the age between twelve and nineteen. I think you have to start even earlier. So at least uh, five to six, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, if girls uh, know or experience that they can do something and that it's valued and uh, that it's really interesting and it, you know it uh, grabs their attention, mm -hmm. they are then open later on for uh, for STEM careers definitely. And STEM is the basis for everything else. So do you think it has evolved uh, the last year, like that there are more women in the sector, or is it still like unbalanced? Well, uh, uh, all, everything is being balanced, okay? But one of uh, the, the, the sentences our CEOs told two years ago was that uh, 20 years ago, none women can be even putting a, a foot in the, in the plant. No, in 20, 20 or no, not 20 because I was on, almost the first, but 25, mm -hmm. something like this. Okay. Because, but not because it's uh, forbidden, it's because none women want to do it. No? And at the end, we started putting the, and of course, it's coming up. Okay. Even for managing positions, as you can see, or everything is, is coming up. Okay, And I think the possibilities are the same. You have to find, you have not to be... Uh, stopping yourself. You have to trust in yourself. I think, <laughs> yes. I think that's the point. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, sometimes girls think that uh, we cannot understand. And at the end, um, when you imagine which is the possibilities to be, you know, creative, because women are more creative, I'm going to say, no? Mm -hmm. Or perhaps they love it to be more creative. Mm -hmm. Science is the most creative way to yeah. work. As I read, <laughs> not only the agenda change. Yes. When I was telling about needs in the world, mm -hmm. um, even I when, when I was a scientist uh, developing products in the in the lab, we remember uh, all the boxes for the fruit or vegetables. You know, mm -hmm. you remember they were rigid. Mm -hmm. They were rigid. They can do a stockage then. Mm -hmm. And you were thinking how to fold, to prepare a folding box. And we develop a folding box, and your creativity is really important. And I think it's well. I love my job. The same. <laughs> and, uh, and all the yeah. all these possibilities I told you that mm. to be in a STEM uh, career, they gave me because I've been in, I don't know for several possibilities all around my company. Great. Okay. I think it, I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, yeah. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So let's move on to our next question. 
I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so know, what, yeah. what are the key skills needed to have a career in STEM, basically? Yeah. Uh, when I was traveling here, I thought, you know, what are the five um, five really skills that I would emphasize everyone to have when uh, when you are searching for, you know, what to become or what to be one once in your lifetime or how to um, how to add value to, to, uh, to the world. I think you have, first thing, I mean, you can realize it now, I studied communication, so anyway. <laughs> so first of all, you have to be I agree. curious, first anyway, <laughs> curious, yeah. and open for new things, that's what Anna um, said already. Mm -hmm. Second, most important one as well, is to be communicative. So, uh, so that means you have to know how to express yourself and be able to explain things and not in a complicated way, mm -hmm. because that's what scientists sometimes, sometimes love to do, you know, so having very complex things and explain in very complex uh, and, and complicated ways, so no, mm -hmm. <laughs> easy ways, complex topics in, in easy to understand ways, and, uh, uh, and the basis for that to be communicated is you have to read a lot, you have to read a lot. So this third C, they are all C's, huh? five C's, <laughs> to be connected, uh, and that's uh, what uh, Anna also uh, said before. You have to be able to think and act in a network, in a, in a networking way, not in a you know one after the other way. So it, it's more a networking way. Uh, so it's not linear, but connected and, and connecting. So you have to connect people, you have to connect facts, you have to connect figures. And then you're get, getting the big picture or the bigger picture. So the fourth C is competitive. competitive. That's what you said as yeah. well. <laughs> so it try always to be your better self. Yeah. Don't be um, happy with what you have reached. You have to strive for more, and you have to aspire for more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, be always try to be be better and reach the next step. Mm -hmm. And the Fifth one, fifth C, is be cautious. So what I mean by that is be wise, be intelligent. Exactly at your age, uh, 12 to 19, choose your friends wisely. Choose your <laughs> classes <laughs> wisely. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and, uh, and, and consider your next steps. Um, also, you should act and think in networking ways. There's only one linear way. This is your life. So you do one step after the other. So we are curious, communicative, connective, competitive, and cautious. Very good. Thank you. So I just wanted to say before uh, you go ahead, Anna, that it's interesting because you mentioned uh, many what we call soft skills, so not uh, specifically the STEM ones. So just uh, it's a reminder and it's really important to know that uh, it's important to have your STEM degree or your STEM yes, master course. or but that there are many other skills that are uh, key to develop, uh, to have a good career in this type of industry. What do you think, uh, Anna? Well, I want my son to be, my sons to be like this, of course, because <laughs> it's really, <laughs> no, then together is needed, you can develop it. Yes. But if you are curious, probably is the first, mm -hmm. and that's the way, because you are going to be developing yourself to be your best possibility of yourself, you know, at the end. I think in a, a, a STEM person is the one who is always reading, always looking outside, nearby you, any possibility to learn, to improve, to, you know, curiosity. I think it's the most important. I agree. Totally agree with Andre. Good. So thank you very much. Uh, now we are moving on for our next question. So, okay. So. Do your companies have a scholarship program for foreign and or local students? Well, yeah, of course, in all our all the sites that so have in Spain and Portugal and the rest of Latin America, we have this kind of scholarship programs. Uh, it's really normal to for all all the employees have a scholarship nearby you from time to time. Uh, in this moment, I have one in my department, mm -hmm. and, and you can be with us during six months or mm -hmm. one year, depending on the productivity mm -hmm. of the person and the, you know, this kind of uh, 
skills <laughs> you see because at the end all of them are STEM but the ones who differentiate you from the other is the ones <laughs> and Greg has to define yeah. Yeah. yeah okay yeah there are a lot of uh, Erasmus programs as well so mm -hmm. not just for, for students but for apprentices as, uh, as well for, mm -hmm. for Europe for example so, um, and we're working together with the Chamber of Commerce as well. So our apprentices, for example, um, went to, um, to Finland several times already and, and uh, apprentices from, from Finland came to us. And there are, um, there are also uh, possibilities that um, pupils from, uh, from partner schools that we are partnering, for example, because we have a partnership with, with partnerships uh, with um, more than uh, 35 schools in, in, in the Rhineland area and, and Austria. Um, but when, uh, for example, there is um, a visiting um, student in one of the schools of our partner schools, then uh, this uh, person can stay with us as well for certain periods of time, one week, two weeks, whatever, or months. Yeah. Okay, so there are many opportunities yes. for students and for young yes. uh, professionals mm -hmm. that want yeah. to have a... Yes. Uh, practical yeah. experience. I've just yeah. had now a girl from, um, or a lady from Barcelona with me as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, it's also so uh, international opportunities. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's move on to our next mm -hmm. question. What does not this Yeah. So would you have basically? I'm going to read the mm -hmm. question but it would be your recommendation to teachers. So mm -hmm. from a school perspective, what do you think a school headmaster teacher can do to motivate our pupils to work in the industry? Mm -hmm. So that's one question already. Mm -hmm. And is there any education tools or program for teacher in your company that can raise our awareness uh, of what is waiting our students for their future career. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend to schools to do if they want to motivate their pupils to work in the industry? Mm -hmm. And are there any resources, programs? Uh, I think you mentioned a bit already. Mm -hmm. Would you like to start? Well, yeah. uh, from my point of view, I think the, the best way is not only to put the theory and that's, you know, in, the, in, the, in your table, because at the end, the most deep, the, the most important difference between the STEM and, and the rest of possibilities when you study is the practice. Yes. If you touch mm -hmm. lab or if you touch any change in maths mm -hmm. or if you touch anything, you are being locked with. I'm sorry. <laughs> because you are going to see the possibilities you have to change the world and to do better things. So that's my recommendation. Mm -hmm. And if there is any educational tools that we set together, mm -hmm. sorry, before we, we are trying mm -hmm. to develop some units to help teachers to mm -hmm. explain more practical way, yeah. you know, in a more practical way, the, the possibilities of the STEM uh, from the energy point of view. I mean, if I address um, <laughs> now older students, um, just to uh, that, they are listening to us now. Mm -hmm. um, I think you should visit the, the, the premises if you have a chance. Yeah, do that. Oh, yeah. Um, that that would be an idea. And it must not be to visit the lab or to visit uh, you know do a bus tour or so. We even can speak about our future challenges. You know, mm -hmm. you know. So what are the future challenges? What is it that you ask from us? Yeah, let's have a discussion. Mm -hmm. You know. Perhaps we don't have the solution yet, yeah. But it's good to hear and to listen to each other. That's and what to I understand think. that you can uh, actively take part to yes. finding solutions exactly. if you go for a career. Exactly. Yeah. Last time we had a, a class, and that was really interesting uh, about sustainability. What does it mean? Yeah, and not in the bigger picture, but what does it mean for me? Yeah, for now. And what does it uh, mean to have uh, responsibility? What does it mean? <coughs> take it on or not. And the other ones for, for younger ones is that we have, uh, for years in Cologne, we have uh, the Tubas program since 10 years. Mm -hmm. And this is a program where schools receive uh, ready-made um, uh, units or TV mm -hmm. experiments uh, from, from different topics. 
for example, whether if a topic is a biology. And the other one is uh, chemistry, uh, chemical tests, and, uh, and whatsoever. So uh, these are units that are covering the term. So every uh, week for two hours, uh, pupils are doing experiments together with their teachers. And we, ta we um, train the teachers uh, in one day seminars per topic at the general course. This is um, Greg. I, I, I was thinking that when I say lab, mm -hmm. I agree with you, it's not the typical lab, chemical lab you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But the chemical, you can touch the final product you are using in your home. For example, you can touch film and you say, what need we all add? I don't know, but for the moment, I'm going to give you an example. Mm -hmm. But when you go to your jerk, uh, you know, to your jam to eat some food, the packaging, we always love that it can fold it up again. Oh, it's horrible when it's not. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> Two years, three years ago, it was not possible. Yeah. Nowadays, you yeah. open it and it is silly again. Okay. This kind of things is mm -hmm. just touch. You are being, you have, are going to be touching in our labs the normal uh, or I don't know uh, for pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, pipes are going to be 50 years. In the in your in the you know in the ground, in the ground mm -hmm. and or for agriculture, mm -hmm. they are going to leave you in even in a desert mm -hmm. to have fruits or to have vegetables. These kind of things are the ones you are going to touch. It's not chemicals, you know, yeah. fine chemicals. It's products. going to be <laughs> the products you are touching in the world. Yeah. So basically, as a recommendation to teacher, it would be to really link their STEM teaching to like uh, concrete mm -hmm. topics and yeah. uh, what are uh, why all this knowledge they are providing to mm -hmm. their students can be useful mm -hmm. for a real uh, world uh, examples exactly. basically. Oh, where does it have found from? Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something that is uh, really interesting for for pupils. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we are going to move on to our next mm -hmm. question. Uh, so, uh, are there alternative careers in this topic that you are aware of? Mm -hmm. Can students branch out after they enter a chemical, petrochemical company? So basically, what are the possibility of change and flexibility existing? Mm -hmm. um, Angelique, would you like to answer? I think this is all, all about the, the, the in, individual, mm -hmm. yeah? So, if, <laughs> if this... Um, when you talk talk about students, you mean the students after after graduation, after university, so or, or basically or for their future younger. career, if they enter mm -hmm. uh, a petri petrochemical mm -hmm. company, are there opportunities to to opt out? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean we have a lot of uh, a lot of customers. <laughs> we have a lot of logistics <laughs> companies. <laughs> we have teach you, you maybe even I mean, able to teach. Yeah, you can be a consultant. I, uh, I mean. Uh, <laughs> but the matter of fact is that we don't have a fluctuation. <laughs> so when the people are with us, they stay with us. Yeah. Okay. So. So the task is why <laughs> making <laughs> long career yes, in uh, yes. this um, no, yes. sector. Uh, okay. There are all the all the opportunities, all the possibilities, but normally they stay. Okay. We Less than one percent. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. People are often out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The main in the case I was telling before. Uh, and again, it, and I was working for years developing products and mm -hmm. so on, but nowadays I'm helping people to do different things, or even the possibility to help uh, to, to change to the digital uh, mm -hmm. transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, a big company uh, and in our industry is so big to de do this branch out to work. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are a lot of alternative careers, mm -hmm. perhaps not to go to a legal department, no? no. It's kind of it's changes different. are not possible. Well, but we have lawyers as well. So <laughs> no, but, but, but at the end, um, I, I know a lot of people has changed from the from our company uh, to, for, for any reasons, any reason, you know, and they can change because they want, but the most is to be consultant mm -hmm. outside or to be helping, but you can do anything you want. But the most inter interesting thing is that the industry itself is so fast changing and broad. So to change. And it has, has really quite, quite a bit of, quite a lot of opportunities. So 
uh, interesting to hear that uh, if you start a career in the petrochemical industry, uh, there are so many opportunities in the in, sector yeah, exactly. uh, and very different type of role that uh, in most cases uh, people mm -hmm. will uh, continue their yes. career. We even ask our graduates, for example, now, you know, uh, coming from the university, that they have a technical background and a natural science background, that they move into co commercial roles. So that's so you can yeah, move from a very uh, like more technical yeah. or scientific mm -hmm. yeah. career to uh, more commercial yes. and more like. Or even if uh, for a technical job you will have to have this uh, skill to be mm -hmm. able to communicate mm -hmm. with exactly. other people, mm -hmm. etc. But I guess if you move on to a commercial world, you mm -hmm. will develop even more. Exactly. Skills. And you have all yeah. the STEM, um, uh, yeah, and the STEM background yeah. also yeah. Yeah. to be a good commercial mm -hmm. for your mm -hmm. firm. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Uh, I see that uh, our classes are still uh, very eager to ask a lot of questions. So I'm moving on to the next one. So, um, what are the components of the petrochemical industry and the types of products they produce? So that's a very big question <laughs> again for you. The types um, of products we produce. So um, we always say that. Um, you touch every day our product. You are in touch every day with our product. So almost everything that you are touching or in or in touch with uh, comes from the chemical industry because we are at the very beginning of um, of the product chain. And the components, uh, yeah, it, it's. Uh, I hand it over to you. Yeah, well, the types of products we produce, the most known, no, the, are the plastics mm -hmm. or are the intermediate for mm -hmm. any chemical. I don't know. Uh, we have glycols or uh, I don't know poly polyols. Mm -hmm. These kind of products you don't touch directly, but yeah. they do a reaction. If you touch the, the foam where you sleep, or you, you are touching, touching or you are touching, you know, the lamp. You are used, to, uh, or the or, or in the pharma sector mm -hmm. is one of the components for the pharma. This kind of things we, we always say chemicals. You are in, as Andres is telling you, you touch it because this is plastic and you touch it. Mm -hmm. This is petrochemical, surely. Mm -hmm. uh, but others are intermediate for a final form. Mm -hmm. that is at the end in your day by day. Mm -hmm. In uh, the case of the components. Well, the components, of course, is uh, polymers. Yeah. Polymers are a change of uh, different uh, molecules. Mm -hmm. Depends on the molecule. Mm -hmm. uh, the final product is different, and the properties. And you add additives mm -hmm. to change the properties. I mean, for example, if we are speaking about one plastic called polypropylene, mm -hmm. and you add um, an antioxidant, you can use it for garden furniture. Mm -hmm. Because if you are going to leave it outside, you don't want it to have dust. No, that's these kind of things are the the, the, the most normal way we work. Okay. Or in the outside, you need a anti UV uh, uh, protection. protection because you have to stabilize the product. But this kind of uh, this mm -hmm. is more or less a component to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. So we start with the <laughs> this is the accord. When I say polymers and I say molecules, these molecules are always with carbon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so another more personal question this time. Um, so what are the main challenges of your job? Um. <clears throat> Depends on the moment. No. Okay. But you say you want to always be a better version of yourself, so challenge yeah, are good for that, I think. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, our job is continuously changing, and um, that's why it's a challenge yeah. itself, <laughs> because you you have to be always uh, improving your your knowledge mm -hmm. about the the next step you are giving in mm -hmm. your company or in the in the in the market, mm -hmm. because market is continually changing. Mm -hmm. uh, the this challenge you you ask us uh, as uh, 
she's telling you you have two possibilities you can develop your career as a scientist and be really advisor mm -hmm. and scientist, or you can be a, a manager mm -hmm. and you have to manage people mm -hmm. ah, for <laughs> me the most challenge of my job is being head of a group of people um, because when you are a chemist you do it yourself but when you go up in the organization you have to do others do it no and mm -hmm. that's the most challenge of because mm -hmm. every person is different and the difficulty to you know to, to manage people for me the most challenge in my job mm -hmm. okay. and for you Alfred, what would you say that is the main challenge of your job I mean, we are, or I'm working really closely with people, yeah, internally, mm -hmm. externally. And um, I think the most challenging thing is to uh, put yourself, I always say, I put myself in, in, in the shoes of others and to predict uh, the way they are going to react or they're going, they are going to behave. So I have to kind of, you know, uh, visualize the future. I think this is the most challenging thing um, that I have, I'm facing. I have, I'm, I have to put myself absolutely into the future. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, well, perhaps another challenge mm -hmm. has to yeah. be our work uh, balance with mm -hmm. our life. Mm -hmm. Ah, there is another <laughs> question coming. No, <laughs> uh, you, 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 the you read the future. <laughs> read the future. <laughs> Look at that question. You read I the see. future because our next <laughs> question is, what is your advice for work-life okay. balance in a company? So you can continue <laughs> what you were saying, Anna. Well, I was, I was, sadly, I was telling not in the, from my from my company point of view, from the, myself, okay, and is that the for me. To be to to have the best work work life balance is was a challenge, mm -hmm. but I think when you find a way to do this uh, balance, everything is working. You need to take time to assure everything is working together. And how do you do that? Can I ask? <laughs> Can I be sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it depends on, on on the situation. But when we when you have kids and they were uh, babies. Mm -hmm. uh, is more difficult mm -hmm. with the time they they need you less, but the the time they need you a lot because you are the you are nearby them is to have uh, the most time you can uh, with the best quality you can mm -hmm. and to assure in the time you cannot be with them they are going to be perfect. That's the point you want you have to look for. And if you have somebody to help you, your husband or somebody outside, I mean, mm -hmm. if you need help, you can. Depends on my situation. We have, for me, that's the most important to have somebody to to help us and my husband. That's the that's the it's a three points for them, and they are okay. And that's why my work life balance is okay. Mm -hmm. And really, the question. What is your advice for what life balance in a company? I think is um, I think in our industry that it's really important uh, uh, for our for my company, for example, it's really important uh, the employees has this balance, and they help you a lot with uh, if you need to be more time outside work teleworking, mm -hmm. we have the possibility. We we can be uh, any any moment you have a problem you can leave uh, sticking with your boss and I think it's really open for us the the possibility to be uh, we be concili to conciliate both mm -hmm. together uh, in my company it's possible and pretty sure in all, in all our companies uh, is the is it's a good it's a, an important pillar mm -hmm. because we know. Uh, how important is the people who are thinking something has their mind fresh because we have to create and we have to improve things and if you are thinking in somebody because yeah. your house is has a problem leave it mm -hmm. please go home future mm -hmm. you know that's the position go home mm -hmm. you have to establish this situation and come back here to continue working when you are okay because you are be you are going to be better no that's it that's a, that's my advice no it's really 
my advice would be to uh, live in the moment and be in the moment. And that means when you work, then work. Mm -hmm. Don't have your mind wandering around what you know, what, what might happen, what if your children are okay or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. that uh, um, that doesn't help. So and and the same with when you are at home or when you do your hobbies or whatever. Yeah, do them. Yeah, but don't think about work in that time. Yeah. yeah. So okay, when I brush my teeth, I think about work, but that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> 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 Five minutes maximum. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And sometimes I have my best ideas <laughs> doing that <laughs> because it's a routine in mm -hmm. a week. Um, yeah, but that, that's what I, what my advice would be. And um, and uh, I I know from, uh, from at least my company and, and definitely from from all, all our, our colleagues as well that uh, our companies do lots. To make that work, yeah. So, for example, we have a gym that we can uh, go yeah, every do. day uh, when we want to and when we think it fits. Um, we have we we're getting the support that when we need it. For example, if we uh, have uh, an emergency at home, so a kid is uh, is sick or your parent or your parent or need you mm -hmm. yeah, when you get older, and. Uh, um, you know, and, uh, and and I think the most important thing is you have to live that. If you tell your your um, employees that they may leave earlier and you do never do that, you know, they, they sure won't they do, do that, that. You know, <laughs> because you are a role, yeah. um, you're a role model. And um, I think this, this is important that you're aware that you're a role model as well. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. Show sure. that it works. <laughs> We invite you to visit the, the website of the EPCA uh, mm -hmm. education. That you can see a lot of role models mm -hmm. of our colleagues yeah. uh, showing how they live, mm -hmm. what the work is for, uh, several examples mm -hmm. we have in this yeah. So, uh, just also it's a good opportunity to remind uh, that. Uh, European Petrochemical Association is supporting us for the organization of the chat and that you are both uh, mm -hmm. active in this network mm -hmm. and indeed there are a series of uh, videos showing some role models and uh, there are uh, some that are shared also through the STEM Alliance uh, mm -hmm. communication channel but as, as uh, I assume they were shared already for the uh, announcement of this chat but we will also share it uh, as a follow-up uh, of uh, this chat session. There are two fields uh, that we have developed mm -hmm. for EPCA that really some of the questions you tell us uh, is more or less explaining because you tell us oh, what's the kind of job I can do it. And there are a lot of information in two films, two minutes films, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. to show you the possibilities from your point of view as professional or from the point of view of application projects. Mm -hmm. So. Then we invite you definitely to have a look there. You will have even more information. <coughs> okay, so let's move on to our next question. What were you most surprised about when you started out in your career? So as a student, you are fresh out of uh, your study. You start your career, and there are some unexpected <laughs> oh, uh, alerts, I guess. <laughs> Would you like to answer that? Well, in, in, in my case, when I started, I had to change my village. My, I was uh, living in the south of Spain, I go to Madrid, and that's one change, and you have to start from zero in a new place. Uh, you are touching uh, people all around Europe, practicing your English, mm -hmm. your French, if you have it, your <laughs> <laughs> all the language you can. That's one advice, of course, from mm -hmm. to, study to, to, to learn languages, oh, yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> to be in the STEM. And the, uh, for me, the most surprise is that chemical is in any thing mm -hmm. I can touch. Mm -hmm. For me, it was really surprising. And, and, and that's why I fall in love, because from the main beginning, I was developing things I can touch. Mm -hmm. I go to the beach. We see the, you know, all the, the, the shares are going, hey, mommy, I develop it. This color is new. I did it. You know, and it's kind of so things it's all around you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the most surprising. From the most beginning, you are part of a team, mm -hmm. but you are not alone, mm -hmm. of a team that 
are working to change things that actually you can see in your day, in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in your daily basis, you can kind of work. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was the most surprising. Practical uh, mm -hmm. experience, yeah. And for you, Sandra? Uh, the most surprising um, thing that I learned when I studied in the chemical industry, because I was both before I was a journalist and I was um, uh, advising companies in the PR company. Um, so when I served in the industry, it was the variety and the amazingly um, many opportunities that uh, the, this industry brings or has and is providing that is what's amazing. And the other thing that surprised me was the human aspect. Yeah? Mm -hmm. These people are so reliable working in the chemical industry. They are so aware of what they are doing, they are aware of their responsibilities and that was really something uh, that, uh, that just uh, struck me as well. Okay. Interesting. Because at the end when I, I agree with some Greg, uh, you think you know there are uh, legislation outside that is forbidden in I don't know products mm -hmm. because chemical but yeah. you know this inside that you are the first who try to improve the technical analyst mm -hmm. to find if there is anything you cannot see today because you are, imagine, you cannot see it because the technology didn't give you to uh, parts per billion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But when the technology improves, you can see one part per billion of one substance and you are the first living out of it and telling to the European Chemical Agency to forbid it, for example. I think it's the, the most surprising. I mean, the, the, when you are in the in your house, you think is the legislation forbids you, but at the end you see, you tell the world uh, that are working to be forbidden something that you will not uh, tell him before. Yeah. I always say when I was with a, a child and they tell me, but Anna, um, why I don't know, estalatos? Mm, mm, why estalatos mm. were in the plastic music? Uh, were for years, but nobody can know it is because the technology goes to part per million. Mm. But when the technology goes to part per billion, you see there are escalates. <gasps> and you're forbidden, of course. I always say that, mm. I don't know you, but when I was a child, I was visiting, I live in the south of Spain, mm -hmm. and my parents go by car to the north mm. to see our family. And I always say, you are going to tell your parents uh, to go to jail because you were in a car without any security. security. <laughs> like you, you imagine how many of us, mm -hmm. we were in a car like this, yeah. uh, doing kilometers without any safety security. Mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, the life learn mm -hmm. us, no, we, do in, do, we do improvement and the chemicals mm -hmm. is the same. Yeah. Why are your parents leave you go like this? They don't know it. Mm -hmm. When things happen, <laughs> everything is changing. Legislation is using it and forbidding not to keep your kids in the car without any safety security. For that's the most. But I with you. The most surprising is the industry asking for security. Okay. So you are not uh, expecting that from the start. So I just want to say quickly that uh, we gave the opportunity to to connect also when their lesson was starting. So mm -hmm. I would like to say hello uh, to the class from Finland that just connected and they will also uh, uh, put some question now mm -hmm. in the chat. And we continue also with the other schools uh, uh, that were connected from the very beginning. So and our next question uh, is how your company is dealing with ecological issues. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to say, well, in our case, we are uh, we have more than 100 uh, projects to assure uh, different ways to leave it out the CO2, for example, mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. Okay, mm -hmm. not only uh, ways to not to go out, even to <laughs> use it uh, to use this kind of CO2 in any product, to use it in the first beginning of the 
chain mm -hmm. when you are starting in the starting point going to the reaction mm -hmm. or in any other place no? and that's um, one of course more than ecological mm -hmm. uh, we'll see a circular economy mm -hmm. is coming and it's a waste mm -hmm. in the same moment you have product that is a waste how we can use it not to be waste mm -hmm. to reuse it because it's not waste it's really valuable, mm -hmm. it's money, it's energy, and it's, it has a lot of possibilities. Mm -hmm. Mainly this kind of the, the, the ways we are working a lot of projects, and mm -hmm. in this moment we are launching some projects, a co projects. Mm -hmm. Can the new kids uh, add in? Yeah, us? we always say that she is at the abbreviation of safety, health, environment, mm -hmm. and CH, uh, is uh, the top priority. In our company, mm -hmm. so and uh, the ecological issues are always checked and, and, and taken into account. So this is on, on this is on the starting point mm -hmm. where you have to do all your operations. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, it's an integral by all stages. Of the exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So we had a question mm -hmm. a bit related, but I think it's interesting. Uh, we have yes. a lot of interest for yeah. this. Uh, yeah. Uh, question. So, what will happen to petrochemical industry when the oil reserve run out? So, you say that you have to put yourself in the future. That's yeah, what exactly. schools are asking you to do. To I mean, to put yourself in the to, into the future, you have to do your kind of homework first. So, uh, check the data and 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 the figures that, that are around. And uh, what is really important to know is that for for um, there's a figure that really. It's, it's amazing that um, for the time being, we uh, burn 93% of our oil reserves. Now that's amazing, that's a lot. And only 7% go into the petrochemical industry. And we use this 7% to make um, that reverse, more or less. Yeah? Because it's Sorry, but it's crazy mm -hmm. to burn 93% of our of our reserves in oil. You know, just by cars, by airplanes, mm -hmm. or by cooking. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, cooking as well. So we should we should definitely um, do something to to make that amount of 93% lesser. Yeah. Is it? Is the, the thing I would say at the end, our society is built using the oil reserves for this kind of mm -hmm. energy that is, well, your car, your house, mm -hmm. all of you are using it. But things are changing and the more the electricity are coming, another kind of uh, mm -hmm. mobility, mm -hmm. energy possibilities. No? Mm -hmm. And at the end, the, um, the oil reserves it is not only petrol, it's gas. Mm -hmm. Uh, this gas is not only from the from can it can be from any places, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure it's not going to be run out. It's going to be as I'm going to say it's going to be this uh, seven percent for petrochemical is coming a lot because things are changing, mm -hmm. and we are going to have more than we can use. <laughs> and we should for definitely use that because this is a raw material, yeah? mm -hmm. and. Uh, and we should really use it wisely in the future. Not just burning it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do something with it, yeah. And mm -hmm. make our lives and our world a better place. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So we are ready to move on to our next question. Okay, mm -hmm. so the next question is in which countries your company uh, have their offices mm -hmm. only in uh, the European Union, in the 28 countries, or do you also have some premises outside of the mm -hmm. EU? And so that's one question. Mm -hmm. And then how and how do you deal with the international aspect of your job? So it's a bit mm -hmm. two different things. Um, and I would you like to? Mm -hmm. Well, so, uh, our country, our company is all around the world because he is. Uh, we are really present in Latin America. Mm -hmm. We are present in the US. We are present in because Repsol is not only petrochemical, is 
petrol company. Mm -hmm. uh, and nowadays it's more than petrol. We are diversifying and now it's an energy company. And we have in Canadian, we have in, in, in Taiwan, we have all around the world. Uh, in the case of um, EU, it depends on when you have offices, but we have, uh, depends on the sales, but nowadays with the technology, you can be doing almost any, everything from any place of Europe. Mm -hmm. And that's the uh, answer, the last one of the question that how do you deal with the international aspect? Traveling, because mm -hmm. face to face, everything is easier. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. to be in that way, technology gives us a lot of possibilities by the conference, teleconference, and, and that's more or less the, 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 the way. But uh, that's the, the thing I told before. Languages are really important, and as much languages you speak, better. Mm -hmm. that's, the, the, that's the reality, because you are going to be in touch with people around the world, and because you are going to be traveling all around the world. Mm -hmm. That's open also to <laughs> other culture, other oh, like that's way of board. Thing. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all has a lot, of a, lot, a lot of things with even a joint venture with a Chinese company. And you can imagine the difference between cultures, because in Europe we are different, we are the same, but uh, more or less we know each other. Yeah. But when you change to the ASEAN, culture, mm -hmm. or even the American, mm -hmm. they are totally different, or the South American, mm -hmm. we are <laughs> so different, no? and uh, to know each other, and mm -hmm. to know exactly we are customer and supplier with all these possibilities, mm -hmm. and to to know this culture. We have inside our company um, uh, training. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because yes, it's not easy. Cannot, no, no, it's not yeah. easy. No. And, yeah. From a human uh, perspective, it's quite uh, interesting, though, to, mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. to all these different. Yeah, I just had to look it up. How many in how many countries we are located? Okay. Twenty-four. <laughs> Twenty-four. More than one hundred and seventy sites and thirty businesses. So we we span around the world. Um, yeah, there are there are big uh, um, clusters, um, mm -hmm. in, 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 for example, in Europe. Uh, one is. Um, Grangemouth, for example, in Scotland, mm -hmm. and the other one is in Adelaide, in the south of France, or in, in uh, a very important one um, is uh, in Cologne, uh, mm -hmm. but also in the US, etc., etc. So we have quite, I mean, it really spans around the world. Yeah. And how do you deal with uh, the international aspect of your job? Mm -hmm. I think this is uh, this is a very very uh, interesting question because. You have to be international. It's not. It's not just you know um, that that you're aware of your culture. I mean, even in even in Ineos in Cologne, there are 28 different nations working there. Yeah, so you would not expect that. But but you have to be quite quite international now uh, nowadays, and definitely for the future. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be, you know, for like people. Okay. Uh, that languages, uh, but but traveling, traveling. Yeah. as you said, traveling, traveling is uh, is really yeah. important, and to try to stay a bit longer, not just making holidays. Yeah, to try to live a normal a life uh, at least for for some weeks in another country. That helps a lot. Very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> and in your uh, premises, in your office, do you also have an international team working with you? Well, in the, uh, in Madrid, for some, in the scientist point of view, we have people from all the places. We have offices because at the end you have mobility in Germany, mm -hmm. in Brazil, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of Latin American people, mm -hmm. U.S. people, and even some African ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we are we are uh, a really broad mm -hmm. uh, people in our technical center. And in the commercial one, depends on the situation or the business unit, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, for example, uh, all around Europe, we have people in Frankfurt, we have people in Paris, we have people in Italy, we have people in the UK, and they are working with Madrid. Mm -hmm. And they live there, they sell there, mm -hmm. but they are sp speaking with the Spanish uh, offices, mm -hmm. you know, every day. But even we have one product manager living in Italy, he's an Italian, mm -hmm. and he's the product manager for a whole world mm -hmm. 
in one of our products, in, in cable, for example, and the, the diversity give us most possibilities to deliver. Oh yeah, that, that, that's another key word, because uh, like you said diversity. before, uh, diversity, diversity is really, really important. Like in EPCA, we have the Council mm -hmm. of Talent, Diversity and Inclusion Council, and the Young EPCA Think Tank, so these are two councils. And we always say, and we always know that uh, diversity is really key. Mm -hmm. um, diversity in age, in culture, in background, mm -hmm. Um, in gender, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the well known, that's yeah. the <laughs> most known one. Yeah. But in the diversity in thinking as well, because mm. if you have five people thinking the same way and having the same I mean, mindset, exactly the same background or the same play, they will, they will not out of evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So in 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 um, we need to be in in order to be really international, being forward thinking and innovating, we have to have that kind of mix and that that brings you really forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we have uh, around 15 minutes uh, more to go and we have more questions coming in mm -hmm. so um, our classes are quite uh, curious about the future and asking is there any alternative sources of energy that are now under development, so alternative to petroleum development, mm -hmm. oil in general, I guess. So mm -hmm. for for petrochemicals, I understand. Mm -hmm. You know, in the case of petrochemicals, every all even food can be one alternative. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are trying to do every possibility to to obtain our products from any. Yeah. Because I think the, the, the most important is to have this diversity of possibilities, mm -hmm. depending on the moment, mm -hmm. depending on the market, mm -hmm. to have the possibilities to, to yeah. bring everything from sugar. You can have polyethylene, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this, this kind of things. No? But uh, you just have to think about uh, if it makes sense. Yeah? So exactly, it's wise to do that, or if, if it would be, make uh, more sense to have it sugar uh, as sugar because. For a nutrition point of view, I, I think I think ev everything can be the source of energy. Exactly. Everything. Exactly. Yeah. We we have to make sure that we think in this way. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Garbage is an energy, a way of, uh, a, a way of energy. Um, and I'm sure there are, there are a lot of uh, possibilities out there that we are not not now thinking even about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why we need that you as uh, uh, students and, and young people and young bright. Uh, talents and, and characters to you know do with us this kind of journey that is looking it, it, it's ahead of us exactly. because we don't know yet what what will bring the future and what will be energy or what will be the, the raw material for for, for chemicals mm -hmm. or no, you know not no. yet at this point I think I don't food but even waste mm -hmm. it's any garbage waste. Every, day, yeah. every waste that you are living in your being. It can be, and now we all are developing the yeah. way to use it to mm -hmm. be source of yeah. energy. Yeah. And how, uh, because you are saying that uh, you have to think if it's a wise way to use mm -hmm. a certain type of uh, source of energy, mm -hmm. but what are the criteria then to define what is a good source of energy? It's the development, mm -hmm. the result of the development, mm -hmm. because you are, you, at the end, mm -hmm. you, you have exactly, you have, well, depending, the way I'm going to say it, like food, we are not going to use it because mm -hmm. there is a restriction in food in the world. Yes. You are not going to use it, but we can. Mm -hmm. But we are we are not going to do it because mm -hmm. perhaps we decide not to go. But you analyze, you have the development, and you can use it. Is the market change? Mm -hmm. You know, could be a possibility. But for the moment, is the is not. And the footprint is really important, and the final properties. Mm -hmm. of Final product you obtain. That's why these developments are really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So moving on to the next question uh, on a different topic. <laughs> um, so how can a parent encourage their child to pursue a STEM career? <laughs> so um, okay, we both okay. have. 
kids family. <laughs> you are the most hard. I was not sure, but yeah, mothers. you have the experience of the... <laughs> Well, in the case, I, I don't, I'm not doing nothing because if, in my case, if my ch my child are really, if my kids are really curious, and the way I encourage them is to let them to be curious. And to to speak, for example, my my kids say that he's going to invent a machine to put me in 20 years, and I tell please run because yes, I need it go now. Ahead. No, but you know this kind of it's possible with the STEM career. Why not? Thinking about the future and fight for them. Yeah. That's the that's the reality of the STEM career. Change things. I mean, if you, as a parent, if you look at children, they are so, in a natural way, um, scientists. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my advice would be, support them with what they do, with what they want to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They ask you anyway, everything. Yeah. And if you give them the, the right answers or point them into the right direction, but let them do that. Mm -hmm. I think they come with a very natural way of. Of, of being curious and that's the that's the main thing for, for being a scientist anyway and STEM, the STEM career, so science, technical, um, and, and natural science and, and, and uh, all these, these things start very early I think we have to leave kids, you know, because they bring it anyway with them yeah? so, so give them the space, give to, them the space to grow yeah? mm -hmm. and don't narrow it down and let them imagine it, and let them imagine everything you want to. If your little girl, age four, comes to you and says, I'm going to reach the Mars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you say you yes. guys. <laughs> yes, you will. Yeah, that's Good. that's the answer. Encouraging also and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, having this impact on their mindset also that they yes. can do things and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So our next question is um, so we have a <laughs> class one, wanting to know what is the most interesting you have done lately uh, mm -hmm. related to education, except this chat, of course. <laughs> so have you been involved in some other lately in some other educational uh, activity? But we are just in the back to business mm -hmm. period, so maybe it was mm -hmm. before the summer or yeah. uh, for me was when I was. Uh, invited by my kids' uh, teacher uh, to tell them about my job. Mm -hmm. and that's, <laughs> for me, was really interesting because uh, this day my son looked at me different because I never tell them about my, you know, they were, I don't know, they were seven. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, the, the, the classroom and, then, and I was telling from the petrol, come down, goes this small pellets that are plastics and for the, this plastic goes, you know, this is bottle, the bottle, the, everything is that, you know, and the, the way he was, mom, you do these things, and I say, yeah, every other day, no, you know, is that you, <laughs> you're <laughs> a mother, <laughs> <you're> a <laughs> <mother>. <laughs> and, but a lot of, they do a draw, the teacher tell them to do a draw, mm -hmm. they gave me the draws of everybody, and they, they write me like a, a you know, like a magician or something mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. They don't think in lab mm -hmm. because I was not telling them about the lab. They mm -hmm. was telling us that we from here goes to here. Everything mm -hmm. you are touching, we give them to comments to you don't you don't know here there are a lot of chemicals and they mm -hmm. say, No, no, no chemicals are here. <laughs> no, no, a lot and there are a lot. Look for cup sticks. I'm going to give you a you know a cube. Mm -hmm. That's the point. No? And, and mm -hmm. for me it was really interesting mm -hmm. because it's a my kids and their friends. Mm -hmm. Good. The most interesting th uh, thing I've done lately was uh, before the summer holidays, because mm -hmm. uh, we are organizing uh, children's runs. The children, uh, kids are running in the Go Run for Fun initiative from the uh, okay. two ki uh, kilometers, okay. and we do a v and um, we have um, done that uh, since uh, five years now, and. Um, total of 20,000 kids were running and seeing these kids, you know, uh, reaching the finish line and having that uh, 
Um, that experience that they did to that 2K, yeah, the two <laughs> kilometers, and they did do, do that, you know, <laughs> and seeing their faces and, and being um, confident, you know, that they could do that was amazing. So I really, uh, I really enjoyed that organizing uh, this, this, these ones. And the next thing we're going to do is about um, uh, the daily mile. We want kids to run a day, a, every day a mile because we think that one of the most uh, most um, yeah disturbing um, things for the future is that kids are getting uh, you know more inactive and inactive uh, and uh, obesity is is something we have to address. So with, it's a very very simple uh, concept. Just go out with your class, run one k or two k's or whatever. One, run one mile. And you will see amazingly the difference in your classroom. It's, you can realize it within within uh, several weeks. So good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so basically, uh, Ineos is involved in a broad range of education activities. Yes. Not only no, directly it's... about STEM career, but also like uh, promoting a healthy lifestyle. Okay. So the Greek has that saying. Uh, um, and uh, so you have to be, have to have a healthy mind and a healthy uh, body. I think that is like yin and yang; it goes together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If you have a healthy lifestyle, then you won't have. When we were talking about uh, uh, life-work balance, mm -hmm. I think uh, this is also yes. later when you <laughs> become an adult and you are working. It's also important to have yeah. both. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to stay active. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another uh, really interesting activity that Soli is doing is we, uh, we in an open journey, mm -hmm. open door journey in our offices, we are really uh, proud to be to have a lot of this 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 cap people, no, mm -hmm. you know, this the people who are, you know, they can listen well, they mm -hmm. can run well, yeah. and they put a lot of us activities mm -hmm. to kids to be, for example. Uh, playing basket, but mm -hmm. in a chair, yeah. mm -hmm. they can be moving or even wheelchair. running. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. will share mm -hmm. and uh, even running with the hands. You yeah. know, the, this kind of bikes that you mm -hmm. can don't yeah. use, mm -hmm. and they are putting in another situation that is more difficult than the one mm -hmm. they are living, mm -hmm. and to educate that uh, uh, there is there is a, another part part of the people mm -hmm. that has this kind of problems. Mm -hmm. no? and, Good. So we have um, well, seven minutes more <laughs> to go. Uh, do we have more questions? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So the next question is more mm -hmm. personal again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is the most satisfying part of your work? So, what mm -hmm. gives you the most satisfaction? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess there are different mm -hmm. aspects, but you can pick one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's working with people and with. Um, Variety of people with very young people to uh, like like the kids that are running, for example, mm -hmm. to uh, quite uh, older people, the variety of people. And uh, what I love is that I that I really can do uh, what I want to do. So if um, I speak, for example, with my bosses or managing directors, and I tell them about an idea, they are they they put uh, they they trust um, uh, that I I'll do that. Wow, so this is really satisfying to have that ability to be really absolutely independent and and having ideas and yeah and having that room to to um, bring these ideas forward and that then at the end see that it works out because you know when you do communications or public relations you do quite a lot for the future and then you're looking back ten years and say that's good. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, that's a cool thing. So that's satisfying. I can imagine. <laughs> and for you, I, mean, I had told you before because for me to 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 reach a need of one of our customers in the in any in normal daily need uh, and after with year because it's not <laughs> it's to develop a new product is not only one day but yeah. after yeah. years look back and say how oh, I was working on that and finally it happens no? and this kind of for me is really satisfying to use 
the chemistry uh, to develop new improvement in, the, in our in our world. No? Mm -hmm. Yes, in our lives. Yeah. Good. Um, do we have more questions coming in? So um, I think we had a very interesting variety of questions and I really would like to give a warm thank you to both our experts to spend some of their time here <laughs> to uh, answer the question from the students from across uh, Europe. Uh, I think uh, the classes were really eager to, to learn more about uh, your career and um, we have, I just want to share a comment that we have from, we have from classes that uh, so one of the teachers said that uh, my students are very enthusiastic and they ask for more chat and discussion like this. <laughs> Best wishes and thanks for the inspiration and chat. Your conversation is very interesting and your discussion is very important and useful. So thanks a lot. Thank you. So this was Thank definitely you. the most exciting one. <laughs> yeah, the results are <laughs> Thank you. Thanks to you for inviting us. And I think it, to give us the possibility to share our life and our industry is important for us too. Thanks a lot. Thank you. As, uh, as I uh, mentioned, we are going to share the outcome of this chat, so the recording, a summary of uh, the different topics that we discussed. And um, we also share some career profile mm -hmm. that teacher can use uh, mm -hmm. to present some, some type of job that exists. And um, so we would like also to thank uh, the Euro Petrochemical Association, that is one of our premium partners in the STEM Alliance, because they help us organize uh, this chat session. Um, and uh, so this chat was organized both by the Scientix project and the STEM Alliance one. It's, uh, it's co-organized by these two major uh, STEM education uh, initiatives in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will continue this type of activity in, during the school year. We will have a campaign coming soon, competition, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm. uh, we really looking forward to collaborate with uh, the school from across Europe. And uh, we wish you a good day at school and a good school year since it's uh, just the beginning of the, yes. the, the, the year. Uh, I don't know if you want to say any final uh, words. Thanks for to be listening as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pity not to be listening to, to them, yeah. but <laughs> thanks to be there. Yeah, thank you for your really, really good questions. Uh, they made me think again. Thank you. Good. So it was useful for you as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye.